In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can spawn enemies. And I want my enemies to spawn from the top of my scene. So anywhere along this line here, they're going to drop in vertically. Let's have a look at how we can do that. I'm going to click on Other Node. And the first thing I'm going to do is select Area 2D. I'm going to rename Area 2D as Enemy. And I'm going to do a Child Node here and have a Sprite. Go back to Enemy, have another Child Node, which is Collision Ship 2D. For my sprite, I'm going to select this default icon. I'm going to drag that and drop it into the texture. So there's my little enemy here. I'm going to zoom in on that. For the collision shape, let's just select a rectangle. And we'll just increase the size here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to add a script to my enemy. And I'll click on Create. I'll get rid of all of this here. Now what I want to use this script for is to move the enemy. So let's create a little function here. This is going to be a process function, so process delta. And all I want to do is to change the Y position of the enemy when it comes onto the screen. So that is position.y. And all I want to do is to add on, let's say, 5. So let me go ahead and save this. So Command S, we'll save this as enemy. There we go. I'm going to create a new scene. And this will be a 2D scene. And this is where I'm going to spawn my enemy. Let me just zoom out a little bit here. We can see the scene. There it is. There's our scene here. So the enemy is going to spawn somewhere along here and just drop down vertically. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to rename this as world. Now I'm going to add a script and create. And we'll get rid of this default text here. Now what I need to do here is to preload my enemy scene. So we'll have a variable and we'll call this um, enemy scene. And that's going to be equal to preload. And what am I preloading? Well, what I'm preloading is the enemy scene. So this here. So if I click on that, this is the path to the enemy scene. So I will copy that and just drop it in here. The next thing I'm going to do is in my world scene, I'm going to add a timer node. So there's timer, you can search for timer and add your timer node. And now I've got my timer node. I can go over here to the inspect. Let's have a look. Well, it's going to auto start. And the wait time, let's say it's every two seconds. Now what I want to do is I want to connect this timer to this script here. So I want to send a signal. So if I go into my nodes here, I've got this timeout signal. So I'll double click on that. I'm adding this to my world scene, yes. So connect. And here I have my function. So once the timer has timed out, what do I want to do? Well, this is where I want to spawn my enemy. Let me just close this up a little bit here and we'll get rid of this pass here. Well, the first thing I need to do is to instance this enemy scene. So I'm going to have a variable called enemy, and that's going to be equal to my enemy scene dot instance. So what I've done, I've now created an instance ready to be added to the scene. Now, when I add this enemy, I want it to be at a random position somewhere along the width of the scene. So what I'm going to set is my enemy dot position. That's going to be equal to, well, we know we can have a, a vector two. A vector two gives us an X and a Y, so vector two. And in here, I'm going to have my X position and my Y position. Now, if I think about it, if I switch back to my scene, my X position is along here, and this is 1024 pixels wide. You can see that in your project settings. I'm not bothered about the Y position, really. I don't want it to spawn down here. I want it to spawn up here. So I'm thinking, well, if this is position 0, 0, my Y position might be negative 10 or negative 20. OK, so let's have a look at the script again. So for the X position, I want a random range. So random range. And what values am I going to put in my random range? Well, let's say I want to start from 20 pixels from the left-hand side 
and go all the way to 1000 pixels from the right hand side. Then all I need to do is to select my Y position. My Y position, let's do as negative 20. Once I've done that, all I need to do is to add the enemy to the scene. And to do that, all I do is say add child. And which child am I adding? I'm adding the enemy. Well, let me go ahead and save that. So I'll save this as world.tscn. That's done. And let me just preview that. We'll select current. And there we have our enemies being spawned. So it should be about a two second delay, I think I said. Yes, there's a two second delay. And they are spawning all the way along the X range here. Now we do have a bit of a problem here. And the problem we have is all these enemies are being spawned. And even though they disappear from the edge of the screen here, they are still part of this scene. And let me just show you that. If I go to the remote over here, we can see all of these enemies and we don't want that to happen. As soon as they disappear from the screen, we want to get rid of these. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let me just stop this over here. And what I want to do is go back to my enemy. And in my enemy, I'm going to add another child node. And this time it's going to be a visibility notifier 2D. I will create that. So I've got this visibility notifier here. Let me just uh, drag that to the top here. We're not bothered about the width, it's just the, the height of this. So once this little box here disappears from my scene, so once it's left the scene, this is when I want to remove the actual enemy itself. And in my nodes over here, we can see screen exited. So if I double click on that, I'm going to connect this to my enemy script, connect. So when this has left the screen, all I want to do is do a Q free. So let me go ahead and play that. Here we have the enemies coming on the screen. I'll go back to the remote again. and We can see what's going on. So we've got enemy two back to one enemy, enemy three back to one. So you can see it's removing the enemies as they leave the screen. You can see that one disappeared and then this one's disappearing, etc., etc. If you found that video useful, then remember to give me a quick thumbs up. And if you would like to be notified when I release the next video, then hit the subscribe button and click on that notification bell.